we get to play with a metal that has seemingly magical properties. Nitinol memory wire. What is it and how can we use it? Yeah. We are Destructive Creativity. We exist for you, for science and for fun. Let's get through the intro so we can do science. Hit that subscribe button really quick so you don't forget. Yeah, I'm <laughs> holding in my hand a fairly innocent looking black wire. But this black wire is actually a special alloy that has some very, very cool applications and properties. So what is this? Nitinol memory wire is Nickel Titanium Naval Ordnance Laboratory because it was made in the Naval Ordnance Laboratory. In 1959. Ooh, yeah! <laughs> That's my year, fam! <laughs> yes, nitinol wire was first created by the Naval Ordnance Laboratory, the US Navy, in 1959. And ever since, it has been used for pretty much everything. In fact, it's even used in your phone as an optical image stabilizer. In fact, in 1971, they actually created a nitinol powered engine, which they thought would power the future with unlimited clean energy. Unfortunately, it didn't. And no, it's not because of some vast conspiracy from fossil fuel companies that are keeping the nitinol down. No, it's because eventually it loses its uh, memory. But first, let's do some experiments. This is where it gets special. So this wire is a memory wire, which means that when it's cool, I can bend it up and twist it and shape it into any shape that I want, and it'll stay there. However, if I heat it to a certain temperature, specifically 50 degrees Celsius, it springs back into its original shape. Isn't that so cool? Let's try this again. So 50 degrees Celsius is the point at which it wants to return to its austernite state. This works with any type of heat. So when you run an electrical current through it, it heats up and remembers its shape. So let's just, just like that. That is cool. So let's define some terms and clarify something. All metals essentially boil down to tiny, nano, microscopic, crystalline structures. And nitinol at high temperatures uh, takes on uh, austenite. an austenite crystal structure, which means that it's very strong cubic bonds. However, when the temperature drops below 50 degrees Celsius, it assumes something called martensite bonds, which are still cubic, but they're just squashed. So they're not cubic at all, actually, which allows it to be more relaxed and bendable. But as soon as it raises above that 50 degree temperature again, it will snap back instantaneously to those cubic bonds, which remember the shape of whatever it was when it was hotter. Let's try this. We'll just connect that, we'll run the current through it, and snap it back to whatever it remembers. In this case, this was already a bent piece. So cool! We're going to show you how to change the austenite state so that you can control what shape it remembers. Right. So to start with, we're just going to start with a straight piece of nitinol memory wire to warm it up. So currently, it's remembering a straight piece of wire. Now, 50 degrees Celsius is the state that it transfers from martensite to austenite crystalline structures. However, if you heat it up to over 500 degrees Celsius, its structure relaxes to the point where you can change even the cubic austenite state. So let's try that right now. I'll just hold this up and I think I can get it hot enough with just a lighter. What we're looking for is a dull red glow right there, which means you should just be able to bend it now this is just a very simple example. So right now, I've bent it when it was really, really hot. 
and I'm going to quench it. So I'll just drop it in some water just to speed up the uh, process here. So now, if we straighten this wire out and warm it up, it bends back to whatever we shaped it at. This has so many possible possible uses. It's it's magic. <laughs> what are some of the uses of nitinol wire? Well, have you ever had braces? You've had nitinol in your mouth. Yeah, it's used a lot in orthodontics, uh, root canals, braces. It's used in stents. So, you know, open heart surgery where you need to open up an artery or a vein. Well, they just stick a little uh, wire mesh of nitinol in there, nitinol, in your blood vessel. In addition to it being a memory wire, it also has a pseudo elasticity, which means it's great at dampening vibrations. So it's used a lot in optical image stabilizations in cameras or in your cell phone. It's even used in concrete and rebar as a vibration dampener for superstructures of really big buildings. And of course, the most glamorous use for any sort of metal in some sort of engine, because this can be used in a thermal engine, essentially because of the contraction and expansion. Just have a bucket of hot water on one side, a bucket of cold water on the other side, and you can have mechanical energy because of the properties of nitinol wire. So we talked a little bit about nitinol fatigue, and that basically means that after about a million cycles of hot and cold, it won't remember its shape anymore. That's great, and that's why it's not used large scale as an alternative to solar and wind and fossil fuels, is because the cost of replacing the parts that eventually take on this nitinol fatigue is just too expensive. But we're still working on it. There are some fascinating ideas in the works of certain coatings that you can cover this with that remove some of the effects of nitinol fatigue. So who knows? Maybe in the future, your car will be powered by a bucket of hot and a bucket of cold water. Thanks for watching. This is Destructive Creativity. If you like this show and you want to see more of it, we have new content coming out every single week. So click that subscribe button. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Nitinol wire is nickel titanium. Oh no. <laughs> Naval <laughs> Ordnance Laboratory. Okay. It's 1950 Wait. year. <laughs> 1950 Why is 1950 year the best name? <laughs>